Welcome to Let's Fix It Right. This episode provides three of my proven approaches for safely cutting a small piece of wood with a compound miter saw and other power saws. And without using one of these approaches, I'll demonstrate why this is a very dangerous task. Let's say we have this situation where we want to cut this one half inch section from this small piece of MDF board or a similar small piece of wood. If you are new to a compound miter saw or about to purchase one, it's very important for you to realize that these machines can be very dangerous. In this case, I'm going to demo what happens if you attempt to cut a small piece of wood or MDF board without properly securing or clamping it to the top cutting surface of the miter saw or securing it to an anchor board. If you attempt to hold this small piece with your hand, the massive torque of the saw blade is going to jerk the board out, most likely pull your hand into the blade and severely cut or mutilate your hand. As demonstrated, it totally destroys a small piece of MDF board or wood that you try to cut. You don't even want to think about attempting to do something like this. With that said, I'm going to provide you three approaches that I've developed to make these cuts safely. We are going to temporarily secure the same piece of MDF board to this elongated piece of scrap plywood that has a good straight edge. We'll place it up against this 2x4 wall, which I've clamped into this position. It's very important that the MDF board aligns with the bottom straight side of the plywood. This is the side that we are going to place against the fence of our compound miter saw. So basically you place both boards up against the 2x4 wall here. Make sure that you have enough distance between the cut line on the MDF and the plywood anchor board and we'll secure the MDF to the plywood with our nail gun and two one and one quarter inch brads. Okay, so you can see we're very secure. In fact, it's not easy to get off. And we'll take this over to the compound miter saw. Put this in place. We've got a good, good solid fit against that that fence and we'll the, and we'll perform the cut. Okay, so as you can see we did that safely. Next step is to remove the MDF board from the plywood and we'll do the We'll go to the back side of the piece that's not going to show. Give it a tap with our nail remover. Loosen this up. As you can see, we have a nice clean cut and we're ready to install this piece as required. My second approach is for you folks that don't have a nail gun or those of you who want to cause less damage to the article of interest. In this case, we have a piece of high grade pine and we're going to secure it to the anchor board with two one and one quarter inch drywall screws. Step one, drill two holes in screws. And then like we did before, you will want to align the bottom of the piece of interest to the bottom of the plywood anchor board because both of them are going to rest against the compound miter saw fence. Next, we'll run a small pilot drill partway through the pine so it won't split. We'll then put the first screw in to hold it in a position for drilling a second pilot hole. We'll then drill our second pilot hole. And add our second screw. The 
Let's take this over to the compound miter saw for cutting. Put it in place like we did with the MDF board. Line it up. And finish our cut. Okay, next step is obviously removing the screws. And you can see we have two small screw holes which are very easy to fill with plastic wood I have here. So you provide minimal damage to the article of interest, to the piece of wood article of interest. Okay, so for our third approach, we're not gonna uh, damage the article at all and or clamp it or, or screw it or nail it to the anchor board, but we're gonna use the same anchor board, put the small piece of wood in place We'll space it out evenly over here with another piece of three-quarter inch wood. In fact, this is the one we just drilled. And place our anchor board in, in place. And secure it, clamp it and secure it to the plate, the top of the saw cutting surface. And securing it very tightly We don't want this wood to move, but be aware that it can move. If, you, if I really wanted to force this, it would move. So get it into place nice and snug, and then cut it. And you can see that works very well. You don't mark up your article of interest at all. And uh, so your, if your compound miter saw has one of these clamps, I recommend that you use it. Uh, if not, you can use the other two methods that I show you, they'll work fine. Per the video, we use this approach for safely cutting the small piece of MDF board with a compound miter saw. You can also use this approach for cutting with a table saw, hand saw, and if you secure the plywood anchor board to a bench or secure surface, you can safely make this cut with a skill saw or with one of my favorite small pieces of power equipment, a Dremel Sawmax. This concludes this episode, which provides three great approaches for safely cutting a small piece of wood with a power saw, which is otherwise a very dangerous task. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and select the YouTube bell, so YouTube will notify you of all my new projects immediately after I publish them. At this time, I'm moving on to my next project. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.